Hi, I'm hello. Luke. How are you guys? <laughs> Pretty well. good. Yeah. Good. Can you guys introduce yourself? I'm Rafael Menoni. I'm the president of UBC Students for Freedom of Expression. Uh, I'm Nicholas Kosovic. I was the former uh, president of the Students for Freedom of Expression, and now I'm just the advisor. Mm. So freedom of expression, UBC. So people, this is going for people that are not from Vancouver. So UBC is the University of British Columbia, and you guys are the free speech club, um, freedom of expression yeah. club. Sorry, yes, different club. But I think people can predict where this is going, given that we're talking, and you guys are freedom of expression. So tell us why we're here and what are we talking about? All right. Uh, do you want to first give some context of context of uh, the group? Right, so like we're a group that brings controversial ideas to campus not to endorse them, but to demonstrate that with freedom of expression, uh, we can deal with ideas responsibly and find new ways to interact with ideas without having uh, any sort of stipulation regarding deplatforming or anything that would be systematic oppression of ideas. So our group is mainly focused on getting ideas that are not heavily present on campus and getting students to engage with them. Like that is our main purpose. Yeah. And so far for the past year, uh, we were able to do that without any restrictions from the university. Also, there were no protests uh, we had Armin Avabi here last year. Um, so we wanted to invite him again. We're also bringing Ricardo Duchesne again, which we brought last year. Uh, except this time they started charging us security fees, even for Armin's event, which is the least controversial one. Um, yeah, so they, and so they started charging $400 and they said that if the event, uh, if it seems like the event is going to be more controversial, uh, according to social media activity mm-hmm. by the opposition, uh, then they will charge us more money. Right. So it's not about how controversial the event is per se. It's about how controversially it is received. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the, basically the universities are not, they know they can't, based on their own rules, tell people that they can't have this event, you can't have this event, they can't, they can't censor speech by students. Yeah. Uh, so they, instead of saying you can't, instead of, you know, deplatforming people, they're saying, okay, you can, but you have to pay security. Yeah, they turn it into a safety issue. They turn it into a safety issue and they they use that as a way for you not to be able to have this because this is not, this is the $400 fee is more expensive than the money. Yeah, the booking itself is only $180. So right. And you're not going to be able to raise that much money from the event anyways to be able to cover these costs. Okay. So basically it's a way to shut you down without acting like they're trying to shut you yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. They started doing this at the, they first did it, this for the Jen Smith event, which happened back in June, right? June 23rd. Yeah, June 23rd. Mm. Um, he was invited to campus by this Christian organization. Well, it was, it was a joint. So basically, uh, Jen Smith is a, a transgender person. Right. Who, who criticizes uh, transgender ideology mm. and in this specific event being taught in schools. So the, the response against that had been from agitating groups in Vancouver, such as Antifa and mm. another group that we can discuss in for like a student group that has chosen to go for deplatforming as their uh, mandate as well. Right. We'll get to the that student group. Is yeah. very but this, um, but my, I don't understand why they're coming after my speech. My, like last year, you guys invited me and I, we spoke and that seemed like a topic that they would be interested in deplatforming. Yeah. That was called how to defeat Islam, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that didn't get on the radar. But this year, we we're talking about Israel-Palestinian conflict, um, which seems like a lot less controversial yeah, than last a, year. Yeah. And now they have a problem with this one. And there's a reason for that because after the Jan Smith event was held, at UBC, um, on the Pride Parade, UBC was banned. Uh, UBC was banned from the Pride Parade because of they allowed Jan Smith to speak. Okay, so the Pride Parade in Vancouver, because you have to say our audience is international. Right. Uh, banned University of British Columbia because of one of the speakers that they chose to have at the university. Exactly, yeah. So UBC like, okay, now that's a 
fake blow to University University of British Columbia because they don't, they don't want to seem anti LGBT. It was exactly. nationwide coverage across the board. So what? it was nationwide coverage of the fact that they were taken off the wow uh, by the Vancouver Pride Society and even Justin Trudeau endorsed the Vancouver Pride Society's decision to disinvite UBC from really from yeah the, yeah. This is, you know, the people on the anti, the, on the censorship and the platforming, they have a lot of power. Like, man, look at how much noise they could make about something like this. And people on our side, we don't have that. Like, there's not, the consequences, I mean, if you put yourself in the university shoes, if they want to give in to you or to give in to them, like the cost and the consequences, like you have to dress in Trudeau, and you have nationwide coverage, like, um, the universe is like, yeah, screw you guys, I'm gonna go listen to them, like, the cost to the university mm-hmm. a lot more. Yeah, like, how could we, why do we have such firepower when it comes to people violating, uh, you know, freedom of expression and, you know, censorship and stuff like that? Like, why do we, how could we get to the same level they are when it comes to introducing a cost to people that, what do you, what do you, what do you guys think? Well, right now, it's just a matter of holding the university accountable to their own policies. Right? Right. The policies are in our favor. There's no question about it. However, the sort of uh, ways that opposition to certain speakers, how, how they choose to uh, deplatform is so effective because they're really willing to do just about anything. Right. They're willing to lie about you. They're willing to use the press against you. It's, it's just fundamentally where the school is in a position where one, it needs to be considered about like the money effectively. Like we're going to lose donors. Right. If we have this, if the, we have this speech, even if we don't endorse this and distance ourselves from this significantly, we're still going to get um, charged with the fact that we even allowed this to happen. Right. And uh, this is not a new strategy either. Um, UBC started doing this now, but I, what was the name of the university? They, uh, Ricardo Duchesne and Faith Goldie were going to have an event there and they charged them $20,000 for security. Whoa. Fees. Yeah. Okay. What was the name of the That was the uh, University of Waterloo. Waterloo, yeah. So you guys uh, basically are a small club that is going against like multiple giants at the same time, mm-hmm, yeah. which is very difficult. So, I mean, and you're not getting much support. Are you like, how, how can we bring more support and attention to the fact that you guys are, you know, fighting as, you know, lonely fights, you know, for freedom of expression. And this is pretty, by the way, thank you for doing that. Like there's not that many people that are actually standing for these values anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how could people like, support you like how is that and and what do you need exactly to be able to get well we need to make the university care about the consequences of silencing people we want we want them to see that there's people that care about freedom of speech just as much as there's people that care about lgbt issues but are there that many people that care about free speech i think i think honestly from interacting with people on campus a lot of people Mm -hmm. recognize this issue like i'm able to like when i was describing how what the club was for and how we were operating, most people were in agreement with me. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, there's no, a large oppressive atmosphere at the university mm. where people are concerned about even becoming involved in tackling this issue mm. because they will lose support from some of their more radical friends or even like uh, retribution from the university itself through like different faculty. Right. So, but anyway, is this even correct to say that this is a free speech issue given that it's not the government that is censoring us as a university? Like, is this a free speech issue? Well, the university is a public university. Public so. university, okay. Right. And they're yeah, also beholden to these ideas as an institution. Mm-hmm. Freedom of expression is foundational to how universities operate in such a way that it's even extended further than what the government allows. Okay. It's within their own rules, right? Mm-hmm. So. They're violating their own rules. So what is it? You mentioned something about the 1970 thing in their own Here, Senate. I'll, I'll, read, I'll read the 1976 statement. Do you have it read it? And this is, what is the statement? This is the statement. This is the official uh, freedom of expression statement, what guides all of the university's policies. Okay. Academic freedom statement. And it was decided by the okay. Senate, uh, which is like an extraordinarily hard thing to do. They're trying to redefine it under the Senate now. Mm. But as it currently it exists, This is the freedom of expression statement. Okay. Uh, 
expression statement, 1979. Six, 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 six. Okay. Riff, riff, while I find it. What? Riff, while I find it. Okay, so, so the, basically the idea is that if students bring, students want to express anything, or if the students invite somebody to, to come to say something, the university should allow it. Yeah, any, any UBC student, any UBC staff, or anyone they invite is allowed to express any idea, no matter how. So, so the university could be like right now saying, "Well, we're not violating that. You could speak. We just have to pay the security fees." That's what they're saying right now. But according to a lawyer, um, well, yeah. according to lawyers that we've spoken to, yeah. it's yeah. a it's a clear cut case of the university defying its own policy. Yes, right. because the policy also says any behavior that obstructs mm. this freedom uh, should not be tolerated. And so the, policy the behavior says, would be in this case, the protesters and the university itself charging a security fees. Right, so this basically by charging the security fees, they're obstructing. Exactly. Right, so it goes against their own policies. And you're saying they're trying to change this policy. Oh yes. So they're reviewing it right so now. So what happens if they do? Like you guys that then are out of there's nothing you can do after that, right? They well, effectively to... they really cannot change uh, the policy because the, the the wording that they are tr they're trying to redefine freedom of expression mm. in terms of power politics. So like freedom of expression only insofar as it's punching up and not down as they determine. So punching up in the hierarchy of oppression, that is. Nice. So, okay, so legally you guys are, t so are you guys considering taking legal action? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are going to update us about the legal action. So this is going to, this is going to show up on the news probably if you guys take legal action. Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. So that should happen sometime after your event. Yeah. Okay. So keep us updated on that. Yeah. Um, so there's a... Um, so they said there's four hundred dollars now, and they said they would increase it if they see more pushback he gets. Yeah, out of in Jim Smith's case, uh, he was charged initially five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and four days before the event, uh, they said you have twenty four hours to pay seven hundred fifty more. Oh my! God. And so, like the reason why we know that they're operating on the, under the same sort of guidelines for us is because they actually accidentally sent us the invoice that they sent Jen Smith. Yeah. Oh wow! So it's just like okay, well they're just like here's the template that they have now, and they accidentally like didn't change the name. They changed the yeah. number, but forgot to change the title. Wow, okay. So, the, your $400 fee for my event is probably going to increase because of this uh, other student. Students Against Bigotry, yeah. Students Against Bigotry is another student club that... What, are, what are, Can you tell me a little bit about them? So basically, they, they have been operated under the guideline of we need to remove problematic speakers from being able to speak at the university. Right. And that's their that's one of their main focuses. And the way in which they do that and why the university is considering their voice in the matter is because they so flagrantly lie about the speakers and misrepresent them in whatever way will get them off of campus. Yeah, for example, in your case, recently they made a post about you about showing me. your interview of uh, Brian Rue, right? You're right, yes. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they were saying because he, he's a Nazi, then you by association are also a Nazi. They say I'm a Nazi. Yeah. yeah. They say, they, they, they didn't say like sympathetic to Nazi, just no. say no. outright Nazi. No, you're exactly. coming and is this the sort of, are these the sorts of views that the president and he, they tag the they president always of the university. university. Okay. It's so like, because you're coming and you have a video where you're talking to Brian Rue, and even though you vehemently disagree with this person, yeah. they, they won't mention that. They will, they will say, well, now by proxy, we're bringing Brian Rue's views to campus. Yeah. So they didn't mention like that I'm arguing against no. the no. Nazi no. in the video? No. Okay. They just say you're in the video with him, therefore you agree with him. Okay. So let me... Let me... Do, they, like, do these people like not... Okay, what is it? Like, are they not watching the video? Are they watching it and realizing that I'm arguing against them and st they still decide to go and... <laughs> Oh, here, I will, I will read exactly what they wrote about you and Brian okay. Rue. So here's, here they just have a screenshot of Brian Rue doing the salute. Not the Nazi salute. The Nazi salute. Yeah, salute. And right next to you, yeah. It says, Armin is another ex-Muslim and the next guest of the UBC Students for Freedom of Expression. He is engaged in a three-hour conversation with local neo-Nazi Brian Rue. 
And then it starts to talk about, they start to talk about, oh yes, this is Brian Rue says the statement that I, I claim to be a Nazi, I am a Nazi. That's Brian Rue, right? Mm. You, you interviewed him because he was a Nazi. Right. Um, and then at the end, as a, like a subtle way of like hinting that you are the same, they wrote, is this what UBC President Santa Ono has in mind when he talks about academic freedom? So it's like your intrigue in their views effectively is like bringing their views, you're platforming them once again. Right. So even though you vehemently disagree with them and you disagreed with them for three hours and it looked like you were really disagreeing with them, right? like okay. that was not enough effectively. Yeah, that's bizarre. So do you think they, they did knowingly being dishonest? Like, like, is that how low they are? Like, they've seen the video and they know I'm against their views. Yeah, I think so. Because they, they're against their views. Uh, you are against their views, and because everyone will be against Nazis, then associating you to Nazis will be an easier way to sell that you should not be speaking. But how them. lazy is that? Like, at least, I mean, put some effort in trying to defend yeah. me. Like, this is. I, I don't think it's fair to be calling it lazy. I think it's actively malicious, malicious. cherry picking of and making it seem that you are worse than you actually are, so that the university will then consider re adding extra fees. Or in, in this case, they want to get as many people to protest your event because mm. the more people who protest your event, the more we have to essentially pay. Pay. So the danger, the safety issue that we are charged in causing is actively agitated by other groups on campus not willing to have this talk happen. Right. So we're responsible for their misbehavior. Yeah, and they don't have to pay anything. They, they, just, nope. yeah, they just have to tweet about it and, and then at, you have to pay the cost. At the Jen Smith event that happened June 23rd, right. people rushed the stage. People rushed. Someone tried to physically assault someone. None right. of those people were punished. Not a single person was arrested. It is, it is actually uh, caught. Not only that, but the security guards on the door let them in without any... Wait, so you so they had to pay for the uh, security, yeah. Yeah. and when the protesters showed up, security, security guards just like, come come right in, right? Actually, actually it's a little... So you, what are you paying for this? It's, it's worse than that, because the volunteers actively told security, don't let these people in. Wow. And, the, and, the, and there are some video that suggests that the security, while they were arguing with some of the volunteers at the door, let... Uh, members of so Antifa you, masked with, with sticks and everything into the room, like so clearly a violation of like their job. So not only you're forced to pay for security, when you pay for security, the security doesn't actually do, yeah. does security. Yeah, they let right. Antifa right in. Right. Okay, great. So uh, am I, am I going to be safe? At the, like, what about, <laughs> do I need to bring like, <laughs> <laughs> I think you should be fine, but like we're we're taking like the only thing that we want to provide our speakers is like a safe environment to speak. Right. Like it would be completely irresponsible for us to bring people where where it, there's a chance that they might become physically assaulted while they're giving a lecture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the most they did at Jen Smith's event is they just yelled over him and mm. and then started like yeah. fighting with the attendees a little bit. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'm, I can I can handle that. Here, I have I have the freedom of expression statement. Uh, okay, that I can read. This is like this is the university, this university, is of British university of British University of British Columbia's official policy on freedom of expression. Right. But anyway, I, I'm an alumni from the university. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. So. The, mem the members of the university enjoy certain rights and privileges essential to the fulfillment of its primary functions, instruction and the pursuit of knowledge. Central among these rights is the freedom uh, within the law to pursue what seems to them as fruitful avenues of inquiry, to teach and learn unhindered by external or non-academic constraints, and to engage in full and unrestricted consideration of any opinion. This freedom extends not only to the regular members of the university, but to all who are invited to participate at its forum, which would include you. Suppression of this freedom, whether by institutions of the state, the officers of the university, or the actions of private individuals, would prevent the university from carrying out its primary functions. All members of the university must recognize this fundamental principle and, sh and must share responsibility for supporting, safeguarding, and preserving the central freedom, behavior that ob obstructs free mm. and full discussion, not only of ideas that are safe and accepted, but of those which may be unpopular or even abhorrent, which vitally threatens the, which vitally threatens 
the integrity of the university's forum. Such behavior cannot be tolerated. So like, obviously there's a lot to unpack there, but one of the clear things is we're members of the university. Mm. We're allowed to bring whoever we want, even if their ideas are abhorrent. Mm. And people who are intent on stopping these things from happening are actually fundamentally breaking uh, this school principle. And the school is more concerned about us than they are about the agitators who will actually plan a legal action. Ill- yeah, illegal, yeah, illegal uh, like illegal. entering into the entering into the forum. Yeah, enter entering in to disrupt, break a number of school policies. Right. The school does yeah, not. There's been no punishments to them. Yeah, at all. So no no punishments for them, but they go after you guys, yeah. right? But this is interesting. Like the people that were running the university back then seem to be a lot w- wiser than the people today. Yeah, they were doing that because of the apartheid. Right? Yeah, it was yeah. it was about the main reason for this statement. It was during apartheid, but also it was characterized by like a different shift in mm-hmm. like our sort of culture. Like we had um, debates raging around like homosexuality in society. Right. The, these were the ways that these things broke through. Mm. Uh, and and it's not as if like like one thing about deplatforming in this context. What has fundamentally changed in our culture, where ideas that are good seem to have like come to fruition under these paradigms, right. but like now like there is significant doubt that that can happen anymore. Right. Like, so the thing is the way p- people. This is by the way not just with the regressive left, but it's also with the far right. They don't really, neither side actually believes in free speech. Free speech for them is a trade, it's a train that you ride on until you get to, to your destination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once you once you have your values set in society, now you limit the uh, speech for everyone else, right? So, but in the middle of the left, right, you know, Christian, and you know, Muslim, atheists, or some people, right, that always want to fight for his value, no matter which values are, no matter whose ideas are dominating, mm-hmm. right? And it seems like they're the minority because p- other people only defend these values when they're the minority. Mm-hmm. And when their ideas are not mainstream, they stand for free speech. But as soon as their ideas become mainstream, they don't want to allow free speech for other people. But the People like you guys are always consistent. You always want everybody to be able to say whatever they want. Mm-hmm. But so I'm scared though, if they manage to change that, mm-hmm. then what tools are you going to have to fight them, fight back? Right. Well, it, it'll be like such a tremendous process for them to even consider changing it in the way that they are intending. Right. Because there will be enormous pushback against right. that. Like no one is going to accept mm. our university removing its commitment to freedom of expression. Okay, I hope so. Yeah, their process uh, is also really slow. They're doing, they're making a joint committee between the Board of Governors and the Senate, and they said themselves that the, this these things take a lot of time. And meanwhile, we're going to be uh, probably suing them. Suing them? Yeah. Okay, and what are the chances of that working based on the advice that you get? I think like, pretty high. Pretty high? Yeah. Because it's pretty clear based on their own rules, right? Like yeah. it's this, yeah. So it's pretty open. So why would they even do this if they know that you guys? Cause, like, do they know? Do they expect you guys to sue them, or it's gonna? It, you know what? I actually don't know if they know. Like, like I don't even know if they disagree with us or or agree with us. Mm. The fact of the matter is, they're already receiving significant pressure mm. from activist organizations that have serious weight within the media and politics, especially during a, during an election season. Right that they are concerned about the university's reputation during this entire fight. They don't even know whose side to take. But it turns out that the faculty are mostly on board with redefining freedom of expression. The students are too scared, the majority of them who even agree with us are too scared to to go about advocating for this or disagreeing with this. Mm. It's just seeming like uh, almost impossible until it goes too far. Yeah, we should note though that um, there's been people on the UBC administration that have shown sympathy to to us, but they are just moving forward with this because um, there's money involved and the, uh, the hierarchy speaks louder. Yeah, and they're scared of with regards to their careers and their position. Yeah. And their there are professors who would love to sponsor us, but they know they're like Nick. I really wish I could sponsor you guys, but like 
everyone in my fac in my department is going to attack me vigorously. Wow. Like there is no way. Like for instance, what we're trying to do right now is we're going to get Noam Chomsky to write the introduction to a petition letter, right. and hopefully that gives enough weight that it'll protect anyone who gets involved in this sort of thing. Like Noam Chomsky is pretty respectable right. like, in the academic world, and he's totally on board with our project. No matter what disagreements we have with him and other things, and this he's getting it right. Like so, that's that's great. I mean, it's. Amazing, like a lot of people keep saying universities are becoming more and more serial, but you don't know how much of that is true until you actually see examples like this and you talk to you know other faculty members that say that you know they're scared. Of, like that shows how serial has become. How how you know? I mean, it's amazing. Like I you when I when you hear about this and read about this, you don't know if it's exaggerated or accurate, but then. How bad is it? Is it, is, you know, can you... Yeah. So, it, so it's as bad as you might think, but potentially worse, because, like, the way that it's normally perceived is, like, oh, like, like a lot of people are like, oh, right, right-wing right ideas are totally suppressed at the, on the campus. Like, that's not necessarily hmm. the whole picture. The whole picture is everyone is afraid of being attacked mm. even like left-wing professors like a professor that I, that I've had mm. is worried about his classmates not thinking that he's left-wing enough oh, and wow. he'll be afraid to like give uh, a sufficient amount of mm. uh, allegiance to whatever he's talking about mm. like this is just across the board people are nervous about what they are able to say mm. because there is massive repercussions for even speaking now across the board right so you mentioned even Justin Trudeau got involved. What what was that like? What did he say? When did he say it? Do you know? He just said that he supported the decision of uh, VPS of Vancouver Pride Society uh, to ban UBC from it. Why would he? Yeah. Why would Justin Trudeau also get involved in commenting on this? Did somebody ask him or something? Like he said, mm -hmm. Justin Trudeau said specifically about Vancouver. Like this is, seems a very local issue for him to get in. To, well, and actually, like that, the, the outcome of that event became a major political topic because right. uh, was it Andrew Scheer based his decision not mm. to walk in the Pride Parade because they did that? Like this Mention is like who's Andrew? Andrew Scheer is the uh, candidate, the candidate and leader of the Conservative Party. Right. So, so he he decided not to go because this is probably one of the reasons why he decided not to go. Right. And it became a huge political issue that that uh, UBC was banned from the Pride Parade. And right. of course, UBC suggests that it is heavily invested in providing support for marginalized groups, which is fine, which is totally fine. But the problem is, are they going to take the view that freedom of expression is not compatible with a commitment to diversity. Right. And you know, this is such a betrayal of the LGBT rights movement as well, because it's being hijacked for other things. Like, you know, gay rights, trans rights, these are important movements. And they're being turned into something else. They're being turned into something that, uh, as a way to use other people that don't agree with everything 100% to silence them and shame them and deplatform them. And I think this is a betrayal to gay people and trans people because their movement is being turned into a cult. And what I, the problem I have with that is that, especially with Generation Z and others, they're going to associate gay rights and trans rights movements with this PC culture mm -hmm. and it's going to turn off a whole new, a new generation of kids away from and, and you can see the result is homophobia for example is mm -hmm. growing transphobia is growing and I think because that how unpopular and how regressive these movements seem is they're not going to go down by themselves they're also going to take down important movements like gay rights and trans rights with them and I think it's going to be at a cost huge cost to gay people and trans people going forward. And especially it has been already to the feminist movement, which used to be a, like, I mean, a, it was a movement that achieved a lot. Now the word feminist is becoming so toxic among Generation Z. And I'm afraid 
that this could also happen to gay rights and trans rights, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Not, not only just that, but once you start eroding these freedoms for your own benefit, there is no guarantee that it will be for your own benefit in perpetuity. Right. It could be now like the exact same thing could be happening against exactly what they're trying to protect. Right. Like, these rights were there and implemented to protect marginalized groups in the first place. Right, right. So if you get rid of them and there's a seismic shift in how the culture perceives them, right. then it's going to be extraordinarily problematic going into the future. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially, yeah. I mean, like I said, if the, if the alt-right was mainstream, the, right now, like a lot of alt-right people say like freedom of expression, but mm -hmm. if they were also mainstream, they would be more sincerio. Probably, mm -hmm. um, but the thing is that you're setting a precedent. Like if, and you're making your idea so unpopular that I don't know where people are going to be 50 years from now. And if their ideas ever become mainstream, they they have history to look back to these to say like, well, they did this to us. We'll do the same thing to them, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, go. Well, sorry, you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. No, you go. No, you go. Ahead. All right. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about our second and third events, which were treated a little differently than yours. Yeah, I was going to go to that dimension before, before we go to the next event. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the event that I had with you guys before, the How to Defeat uh, Islam. You mentioned that the student, uh, the Students Against Bigotry Club, yeah. I guess they, they, they have been tweeting about me as well. I saw that. Mm -hmm. um, we, they, can't, we can't see it though because they also blocked us on Twitter. Oh, you could just yeah, have so a yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. But they mentioned something about the how to how to defeat Islam event as well, right? They had yeah. some comments about that. What did they say? They, about that? Uh, they they effectively said that you were promoting ideas that would damage and pers and, and, and inspire prejudice against Muslims. Did they not watch the event? That's exactly what I thought, because you had taken such an extraordinary amount of time to say, I want to protect Muslims, right. and I want to protect them from real, honest prejudice against them coming, like, that is existing within our society. Like, right. you made it abundantly clear that you are not anti-Muslim. I mean, that is exactly the opposite of what this group is saying. Like, right. they either not, either did not watch it, or if they did watch it, they decided to like, yeah, we're going to lie. Like, is that how low they are? Like, you're like, we're going to lie about this? It's either they're delusional or they're, or they're being nefarious about it. Okay. All right, so what we wanted to mention about the next event? Okay. Yeah, the next two events, which would be with Ricardo Duchesne and mm -hmm. Faith Goldie uh, and Janice Fiamengo. Uh, Faith Goldie's not coming anymore, but she was initially there. Um, instead of being immediately charged security fees, they were put on hold until September 12th, which is which was last Thursday, um, when the Board of Governors met to talk about uh, this issue, the booking policies, everything. And they we were told that those events would be unfrozen after this meeting. Mm. Yeah, initially we thought that they would immediately change policy on that meeting uh, so as to not have these events at all. And uh, we thought they would apply, uh, yeah, but then we were told that these things take a lot of time. But then on the day of the event, they barely even mentioned the event, uh, the or the second and third events. So they they, they said they're gonna unfreeze it and they, on the but, day, but they did not. But they did not even discuss it. Right. No, right. they just transferred it to risk management services. Well, yeah. You know if, if which is who decides how much security fees are charged. If your lawsuit is successful, then that's gonna open the door. To a whole bunch of events, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, it, not only will it will it stop the university from charging security fees like disproportionately, right? But it will also stop that issue at potentially all publicly funded universities across wow. Canada. So because this, it sets it, it sets an interesting precedent. Wow. Right? So so if you win, you're not just winning against University of British Columbia. You guys are setting a precedent for all other universities. Okay. Wow. You guys are just how many of how many of you are how many of you are there in this club? There's like about 10. 10, yeah. So there's like 10 of you, and you, if you guys win, you're making history for freedom of expression, you know, and you just like 10 students. That's amazing. You guys are heroes. Um, but if we fail, it's over. It's over. It's over, yeah. Okay. Because if we fail and they decide, these people try to bring these people, we need to change these policies ASAP. 
if we fail, it's effectively over. Okay, how can people help you? Uh, I. Uh, you guys are you guys are basically fighting a battle that people don't know about, and this is about freedom of expression in universities all across Canada. And if you win, so this is a major. This is like a. Okay. We're gonna be opening out a Patreon account soon. <laughs> It's but it's people. not. It's not like it's not just the money. We need people yeah. at the university, students, to get behind this and start helping us with this issue because there's a lot of work to be done. Right. And there's very little attention. We can't do everything towards like uh, helping this issue unless everyone is involved from so all different backgrounds. So how can people backgrounds. contact you and reach out to you? They can. They can find us on our Facebook page. You um, facebook.com uh, slash ubcsfe. Okay. Yeah. And you said you're gonna open a Patreon account. Link in the description. <laughs> okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. You make it too nice so I could include right. it in this video. Right. Because you guys are paying. It's not. You're actually having to pay for these events and the the security fees yeah. and all that stuff. And, and with the hope that we'll get the money back if we win the lawsuit. What about the the legal? How can people reach out? Like people with legal expertise, can they reach out to you and give you advice? We've been we've been in contact with someone who was interested in taking this case. Yeah. So okay. Great. We had the legal the legal battle all kind of considered. Okay. Wow. You guys. You guys are. And nobody. Nobody outside of a very small circle knows about you, and you guys could be could be affecting. You know. Ex freedom of expression all across Canada just mm -hmm. by this fight. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we need help mostly from UBC students. UBC because, students. Yeah, we want to stay true to this to the Senate statement. Um, yeah, so we, we want to remain a student club. Yeah, students only because students have the highest stake in our own university. Imagine if UBC changes all these policies. Right. Like in a different way, we have a stake in our university's reputation for being a good university. Mm. Like if I'm 40 years down the line and I say that I went to UBC, I'm an alumni and you're an alumni too. Yeah. If you hear like rumors that your university is doing bad stuff or it's mm. misbehaving towards students and it becomes a widely known issue, mm. it damages the fact that you got your education at UBC. Mm. And that is just an explicit fact. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, sure, but more importantly, you're turning universities into safe spaces mm -hmm, yeah. rather than a place where people go and get challenged with, I mean... That. Right, and what value is that kind of education? Right, right. So, um, what's the... So, the event that we're going to have, when, like, when is that? Like, do you want to talk about the, my event a little right. bit? Yeah, so... Go ahead. The, your event? Yeah, when is that? This uh, yeah, that's going to be September 19th, 19th. Uh, next Thursday. Right. Uh, you're going to be talking about Israel and Palestine conflict, right? Right. And yeah. talk about the role that religion plays in it. Is that correct? Well, or lack of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably, by the way, just, just today we, I was in a, a meeting with a um, conflict, conflict resolution expert from Israel talking about specifically this. Mm -hmm. So to get prepared for this, it was pretty cool. But yeah, I've been to Israel, I've been to Palestine, and it's, I think it's going to be interesting. It's very weird because this is a very, like, I have, I have said controversial things. Mm -hmm. This is not a controversial. This is a pretty mainstream. This is not issue. controversial. Yeah. Among all the things I've said, this is the least controversial no. topic that I cover. So that was, that was our immediate reaction. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we had an event with Armin Havavi that was titled, We Must Defeat Islam. No protests, no security fees. We're having an event on Israel-Palestine from an extraordinarily moderate view. Right. And fees, you gotta get rid of this event, like, hurry. It's like, more about the, me than the topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, it's not about the topic. It's about you, it's about the group, and it's about the current situation with, with Pride. With pride. Um, not even specifically Pride, like, generally yeah. speaking, these yep. events mm -hmm. have been existing on campus for, mm -hmm. like, the last year. And only recently has that group Students Against Bigotry formed. Oh, recently, like, okay. So, uh, so I think last Jan January they started organizing. Are they, do we have an Antifa problem on the university? You, you students Against Bigotry is basically, is basically a student Antifa group. Oh, so they're, they are Antifa? Yeah. Oh, shit. I mean, like, when you go to their, like, events, like, you will recognize people who are in Antifa. Right. And, like, they are, like, the student wing of Antifa. Basically, yeah. They, they also did this compilation. And they called it the history of hate at UBC. Yeah, yeah. Talking about all controversial events that happened in recent history, and you were in there. I'm. I'm mm -hmm. in the. Yeah. You're the. Yeah. You're the one of the one of the first ones. Yeah. 
And the history of hate of the university. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. All right. Just to, just to be very explicit about like how malicious they can be. Right. Last event that I hosted as president, the way that they protested that is that they claimed that I was a fascist who abused my girlfriend, basically. So they made it an extraordinary, extraordinarily like personal endeavor wow. to like attack the event. These people have no shame. Like, <laughs> I mean, oh God, like, I don't know, like I, I give up. I give up on trying to understand them. Like, are they? Do they? Do, they, do you think they think that they're the good guys? There, there are there are members of that group are who are so disillusioned with their tactics right. that they're actually like considering joining our group. That's how bad they are. Wow. Like they're they're switching sides because they're just misbehaving so much. Their behavior is totally intolerable. If there's no way we could have a discussion with them, right? Like they're not for discussions, obviously. No. Oh no. We I'm might we might try to contact them at some point. Right. Yeah. I would be interested. I, if you're watching this, I would be interested in you know having a discussion. And we love to have a joint event with them at some yeah. point. Yeah. If they are young. See, this is the difference between us and them. We we're willing to talk to anybody, including them. This is. I mean, they don't see the point of dialogue. The reason why I talk to. By the way, if you're listening, the reason why I talk to Nazis. Is not to because I like their ideas. It's because I want to expose their ideas. I mean, how? I here's the thing. I interview people that were arguing that the whole to most. Okay, this is very interesting because I interviewed a Muslim that was arguing to me why it would be okay under certain conditions to kill me I as an ex-Muslim that. under an Islamic state, right? And if I like, if people think because I'm platforming somebody, I'm agreeing with them. They're arguing that I was agreeing with somebody that was arg- that was making the point why it's okay to kill me. Yeah. And I had a very respectful and friendly discussion with somebody that was basically telling me why it's okay to murder me, mm-hmm. right? So, but, and I put that on YouTube, and YouTube had no problem with that. I mean, this guy argued why, why ex-Muslim should be killed, why it's okay to have sex with nine-year-olds, uh, why it's okay to beat your wife. And YouTube was like, yep, not only okay, monetized. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. cool, bye, whatever. Um, and then I put the interview with Brian Rue. This is why I had to put it on somewhere else. I put it on YouTube within minutes. Yeah, cool. Minutes, YouTube was like, no. Mm-hmm. And this guy didn't even say anything. Like, he said some historically inaccurate stuff, but he didn't get to the point where he would argue like, you know, Jews should be killed or anything like that. So it was no killing or violence involved in any of this discussion. It wasn't the Muslim one, but this one, because it's Nazi, because it's like white supremacy stuff, like, you know, so it's not about the harm that people are talking about. It's mostly about what what topics they're sensitive about, right? Mm, yeah. And the thing is, I think the students at Gets Bigotry said that we uploaded it on um, hate, you know, and, and, and somewhere that there's all, all these Nazis are like where did you mention because I uploaded it on once YouTube oh did you put uh, it on BitChute I put it on BitChute uh, oh okay yeah, so yeah. because YouTube um, didn't allow it immediately I had to go upload it somewhere else and I uploaded it on BitChute and, and, I think, and I think these people are like saying oh that's where all the hate is well yeah well because that's where it doesn't get removed. Like, yeah, you don't have you, a lot of choice. Yeah, where should I upload it? It's a pretty like open platform. Like everyone. Yeah, is everybody to can upload it. But that that is exactly what they did to YouTube, right? To right. get them to remove those sorts of videos. No, yeah, but so no, but it's very interesting. The tactic is like so. There's YouTube will remove it, and there's this place where it removes nothing. So obviously, there's going to be a lot of Nazi and right wing stuff, alt right yeah. stuff on there. But beca- but you could also upload anything else and it's not going to be removed. But now if you go upload stuff there, they're going to be like, oh, they put it on a website where all these hateful messages are there. Well, yeah, but if you upload cat videos there... Oh, the cats are, the it, cats are not Nazi cats. Yeah, that, that's not going to be removed either. Like, what the... I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it makes sense to, to try to argue with people that are not even interested in telling the truth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like... If they have already made the decision to be dishonest and misrepresent, then logic is not really a point. Like, I mean, they're not interested in the truth. So why would you even argue about the law? No, they're interested in shutting down people by any means. Yeah. So so yeah. So I don't know if what would be the point in even showing the 
illogical arguments that they're making because they're not interested in, you know, they already made the decision. So sometimes I think like the people from different tribes are just what they're saying and what they, is mostly a signal to their in-groups that look, we're part of the tribe and to their enemies that, okay, these are the ask group, this is the in group. It's not about finding the truth. It's not, fi- it's not about figuring out what arguments are good, what arguments are bad. So if that's not even the goal, going to them and trying to argue and make se- trying to make sense to them is not going to achieve anything because that's not, that's not even the intention. The whole point of making the, the, their arguments and their um, points that they're bringing up is not even to understand what truth is. Mm-hmm. So that's why I have a problem with even arguing with them. Well, but I'm curious to know how they justify it in their head. Yeah, I, I want to know. They want to control the ideas. They want to control what can be said. So right. They'll be right. That's that's exact. They want to be right perpetually. They don't want any new ideas. Yeah, but I want to see how they rationalize it. It's power politics. You don't even have don't, to. Don't. You don't have to rationalize power politics. It's the only thing is I'm in charge. I'm powerful. That yeah. is it. That's power politics. Right. It has no other virtue other than power. All right. Okay. Do we want to add anything else, or are we good? Um. I'll create the Patreon account soon. Yeah, link in the description. Link to the event in the yeah. description if yeah. you guys want to come. Again, what time is it? Where is it? UBC Vancouver, uh, September 19th. Right. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. I'm going to Thursday, be speaking. Um, I, I, I had a conversation today, and the, suggest- the topics that I'm going to bring up has been considered you know, pretty good by an expert, so I'm confident now. That is uh, the the points are valid, and I have I, I come with um I've been to Israel and Palestine, and I've talked to a lot of people on the ground there. So I'm I'm bringing up in some a perspective that might be new to some people. Some people might think um, they've heard it before, but it's different from what I've seen. I mean, I've been following this topic for a very very long time, um, the Israel and Palestine issue, and I think I'm introducing something new. Um, so. Come and see, let, let me know what you think, but also just come just to support, if, even if you're not interested in this topic, just, we're going to go out after and have dinner, right? Come to support the club, you know, buy tickets so that you can support this, uh, the student club. And if you want to talk about a different um, topic, we could, you know, over dinner, we could t- discuss those topics as well. Where are we going to have dinner after? Okay, we don't say Huh? You can't, don't, don't say Okay, don't, don't say it. Okay, okay, okay. No? No, because, no, because we're going to come. SAB okay. is going to... We're not going to have... <laughs> we're not going to have dinner after. <laughs> we're just going to go home and sleep. We're just going to go home and sleep. Okay. Wait, are we, do I have to cut that part out? No. No, that's no, fine. As long as I don't say where. We're yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Patreon link in the description, uh, please. And also comment. Commenting really helps the videos to get more, you know, spread. So comment. Um, yeah, you know. And, and if, you're, like, if you're a student at UBC, contact this guy and help him out because he's been working super diligently. Yeah, right. thank you. You guys are heroes. I really appreciate everything you do. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.